Hello everyone, welcome to episode 26 of the Big Dunge Podcast. Today we'll be talking about the Phillies being somewhat on fire, Warriors having a 3-2 lead over the Celtics in the NBA Finals, the NHL Stanley Cup starting up, as well as sports history, and a whole lot more. Just a reminder to like the Big Dunge Podcast on Spotify, subscribe to my YouTube, Big Dunge, and follow me on TikTok, which is also called Big Dunge. It will be greatly appreciated. So starting off, like always, with the NFL, not much, of course, happening with this offseason, but big news today, especially for our Steeler fans and, of course, Mika Fitzpatrick. Steelers signing Mika Fitzpatrick to an extension. I'm pretty sure it's four years worth over $73 million. That's a lot of money for a safety. A lot of people are saying well-deserved. I would say well-deserved. I mean, it's about $18 million a year. Uh, I, I mean, it's tough. $18 million a year for a safety. Definitely deserves a lot of money. I'm going to go with, yes, he deserves it. I really haven't had a chance to really look into it. Um, the news just broke. Um, so definitely happy he's staying. Definitely happy he's getting paid. Definitely happy we have him for another four years. Um, he got got his money. I am glad, though. So, yes, thinking about it now, he definitely is worth it. One of the best safeties in the league. Doesn't really show stat-wise on the passing game. Main reason why is because, well, quarterbacks don't want to throw his way. Wide receivers don't want to mess with that. Quarterbacks don't want to mess with that. Offense does not want to mess with that. However, he is a huge, hard-hitting safety. One of the hardest-hitting safeties, hardest-hitting defensive players in the league right now. Watching a lot of plays last year, just destroying dudes. Uh, definitely happy to see Mika uh, you know, staying in Pittsburgh for a while. Other news, Golden Tate playing baseball. He's switching to baseball. I don't know. I mean, we see athletes do this in the past. Michael Jordan, Tim Tebow. Uh, we see also athletes get drafted to the MLB, even though they're going to different routes. We saw Kyler Murray. I know Tom Brady even got drafted. Russell Wilson got drafted. Um, Golden Tate, they get drafted. But I just don't understand this thing. Like, how do players – how is it possible for somebody like Golden Tate, okay, Tim Tebow, Michael Jordan, to just randomly say, okay, I'm going to play professional baseball if they're not touching a bat in 10 years or for guys who've been working to play professional baseball their whole lives. I just don't understand how that works. I mean, I'm not hating on Golden Tate. I'd love to see him succeed. I'm curious to see how it comes out. Obviously, you know, other baseball players, really besides like De- Deion Sanders and Bo Jackson, um, it really doesn't work out too well. I mean, it didn't work out too good for Michael Jordan. Tim Tebow was doing okay in the beginning. Uh, or not in the beginning, but he was doing good for a bit. But unfortunately, you know, age just got to him. But then we saw him come back to football. I mean, I don't agree with that. I like Tim Tebow. Obviously, nobody r- agreed with him going into signing with the Jaguars, but Going back to Golden Tate, I'm curious how this is going to work out. How somebody who never touched a bat in a while since college, uh, maybe he's been training low key. I don't know, but I just still don't think that you know at that age, you know, rusty with baseball, you know, he's going to play professional baseball. I don't know. Like, well, how come? I, I guess I know the answer to this. You know, how come he could do it, but I can't? Obviously, the the thing is, I'm not a professional athlete, regardless, right? Like, he was a professional football player, really good football player. And I like Golden Tate because I'm a, I'm a Notre Dame fan. I mean, he played for Notre Dame. I like Golden Tate. Like, I don't, I'm not, it's not like I'm rooting against him. I just, I don't know. It's just hard. I feel like it's publicity stunts these teams do because it usually rarely works out. Deion Sanders and Bo Jackson are really the only exception. Um, and Kyler Murray, of course, could have went pro. Obviously, he was, he was good, but he didn't. So, I mean, we don't know yet. And if I guarantee if Kyler Murray wants to play baseball now, he would be good, but he wouldn't be that good. I mean, he, I don't think he'd make a good career out of it. That's just my opinion. Um, I mean, I'm rooting for Golden Tate. Hopefully, he does good. Getting a second chance in the sport now after retiring from football. Obviously, baseball is a safer sport. And when you get to the big leagues, you know, the money's there, safer. I mean, if I had to pick between being a professional baseball player and a professional football player, even though football play, football is my favorite sport, I'd go the baseball route. More money, safer, and uh, less toll on your body, right? So, yeah, room for a Golden Tate. I just, I'm just curious to see how it works out. I don't know. Juju Smith-Schuster saying the other day that, he, you know, he loves Pittsburgh. His heart's still there, and that spreads rumors of might he come back. He only signed a one-year deal with the Chiefs. I don't know why. I think he just wanted the mix of things, you know, trying to get that leadership role. I mean, he's still not the best receiver. like Best wide receiver, yes, but not the best overall receiver. I mean, that's obviously Travis Kelsey. But with Tyree Kill, even. I mean, Juju has that number one spot now. as the number one wide receiver. Not saying much. Love Juju, but he's not really meant to be a wide receiver one. He's meant to be a really good wide receiver two. Sign a one-year deal. We'll see how it turns out. I'd 100% welcome him back in Pittsburgh. But, I mean, we did sign 
we did draft two pretty good wide receivers in the draft this year. Um, so maybe, maybe we won't even need them. But we're also seeing stuff with Deontay Johnson having problems with his contract stuff. Uh, I don't know. I'd welcome Juju 100%, just not as a wide receiver one. We got to figure out a wide receiver one. That's obviously Deontay. Um, but, you know, nothing's guaranteed that he can stay in the league. I mean, all these wide receivers want these big money now ever since Travis Kelsey. I'm sorry, Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, and uh, the, dude, the, the dude from the Raiders who went to the Jaguars got paid big. Now, every, all the wide receivers want this money. Um, I like Deontay Johnson. I don't think he's worth anything over $10 million a year. I'll keep it real with you right now. Um, I mean, he's just not trustworthy with everything. He's not consistent, you know. One, one play, he catches a... 40 yard contested pass and then the other you know he drops a five yard slant route for an important third down um i don't know i hope i'm proven wrong with him but i'd 100 percent welcome juju back i'd love to have dante juju and chase claypool back again um we'll see i'm happy also with pat fryer move him being our starting tight end now big things from him big things from him hoping to see him get around the double digit touchdowns this year getting around eight or nine touchdowns this year uh that's all for football. Going on some history like we always do. Not much, but it is Cooper Cup's birthday. Just made a reaction video of him the other day on my YouTube. So go make sure to check him out. I had one of the I keep saying one of he did have the best wide receiver season of all time, in my opinion. Uh Triple Crown winner, Super Bowl MVP, Super Bowl champion. Had an amazing postseason. You know, you could argue if he if he had the best uh regular season of all time, but the best overall season from start to finish. Definitely the best of all time. Moving on to the NBA. We're in the NBA Finals. Celtics versus Warriors. Warriors are leading currently 3-2. to two. I'm going with Curry for MVP. I mean, he had an off night last game. Only 16 points, I'm pretty sure. But had one of his best games of his career the game before that. Hitting deep threes, contested threes. What a game from him. Draymond Green off to a rough start. Same thing with Klay Thompson. Who Klay Thompson did have a good uh, game last game. Same thing with Draymond Green. But they were off to rough starts. I know the Green was getting a lot of criticism. He was only getting like two, four, two to four points. Um, triple singles, they call them. That's not a bad thing if you're scoring a lot. Uh, he was, and also staying away from fouling, which Green was doing. You know, triple singles is fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with a stat line of, I don't know, seven points, eight rebounds, and eight assists with two steals and a block. That's that's a good that's a good stat line for a a, a non star. Like obviously, Jermon Green. I mean, you can consider him a star or not. I don't know. I. I, I, like when he was in his prime, when he was like making the All Star team every year, which I think he made this year. But anyway, like a couple years ago, yeah, Jamal Green's a star, but now he, he's still a star, but like not in terms of like currently. Like he's just like a, a former star. Like, uh, like he's out of his prime. Um, but when you're that type of player, like a role starter, basically, that's a good stat line. But when you're fouling, you know, on the verge of fouling out every game, and you're only putting up two to four points, that's no good, no good. So. uh I don't know if I mentioned who I was rooting for. I'm not really rooting for both. I wish both teams would lose. Obviously, that's not a scenario. But I like Jason Tatum because I'm a Duke fan. Um, I'm rooting for him, but I don't like the Celtics because of the Sixers. I'm um, in the Warriors. I'm just so sick of seeing them in it, let alone winning it every year. Um, but I think the Warriors are going to pull through. I did ha- I did say I did say Warriors in six. Um, if they win next game, I'm right with that. Four to two. Uh, yeah. That's much on NBA, going into history now. 2004, the Pistons defeated the Lakers to win the NBA Finals. Chauncey Billups ended up winning the Finals MVP. 2014, Spurs defeated the Heat to win the NBA Finals. Kawhi wins MVP. That was a fun year to watch the Spurs. Um, Tim Duncan, my favorite basketball player of all time. Tony Parker, Manu, Kawhi. That was a great squad. It was just like a fundamental team chemistry defeating, of course, the superstar, super team, Miami Heat. 2019, Anthony Davis traded to the Lakers. I, I've been hearing that he hasn't touched the basketball since April. I mean, I don't know how this guy made it on the top 75 over Dwight Howard. Now, if you want to argue if Anthony Davis deserves to be on it, fine. But to make it over Dwight Howard? I don't know, man. Who decided that Anthony Davis was a better player than Dwight Howard? He is not. Not even close. Maybe close, but not close. Okay. Dwight Howard, I think, three-time defensive player of the year. Like, ten-time or eight-time all-star. Carry that Orlando Magic team to the the playoffs, I'm sorry, the finals, already already has a ring, even though he didn't do much with the Lakers, but he did, of course, has a ring. He was a rebound champ, block champ. I mean, Dwight Howard is definitely better than Anthony Davis. He definitely deserved to be on that top 75 team. But what could you say? What could you do? MLB, Phillies, 
They're amazing ever since they fired Joe Girardi. But here's the thing. Blew a huge lead yesterday to Marlins, and that killed me. Hoskins went off. Let's see. I think he had he had two homers. Pretty sure he had double. He went off. Bryce is on fire. He's batting over 300. The bullpen is what's holding us back still. Our bats are on fire, but our bullpen is still killing us. Our starting pitching is fine. Just our clothes. Just Neville. Every time he goes in, there's going to be a problem. Whether we win or lose, he's going to give up runs. He's going to give up hits. I think he's out now of the lineup, so which is a good thing. But we blew it. We were up 8-4, I think, and then we ended up losing like 11-9 or something. We're at 31-31 and right now. We're facing the Marlins again today. That's a 1 o'clock game. I'm pretty sure that's currently going on right now as I'm making this podcast. Yeah, end of the sixth. Marlins are winning 1-0. Looking at the rankings right now. In the American League, well, yeah, the American League, the Yankees are leading overall, thirty-five and sixteen record. Geez, Aaron Judge leading with leading the league in home runs. The worst team right now is the Kansas City Royals at twenty. Reds are having some of a comeback. Obviously, they're out of playoffs, but they're out of twenty-three wins. Pirates, glad to see them in. They're tied basically in their division with the Phillies. So the Phillies are third in their division. Pirates are third in their division, even though the Phillies have seven more wins. But glad to see the Pirates winning. Even though I don't like the Pirates, I'm a Steelers fan. I always want to see the Pirates win, unless they're fighting the Phillies. But looking at the National League, the East Division, Mets are second in the league overall with 41 wins, 22 losses. Braves are at second, 36-27. Phillies, of course, at 500, exactly. Now, obviously, I'm not saying we're going to go for the division. I mean, we're 10 games back in the division now. Um, I mean, it has, it has to be a miracle. That's fine. The thing is, all right, if we're looking at the actual league, here we go, the actual wild card I meant. We're only like two teams back. Okay. Looking at, so yeah, the league, the division leaders are, of course, yeah, so we're one, two, three, four. We're five games, I'm sorry, seven games back from the wild card. But we're tied with nobody. So, San Diego Padres, San Francisco Giants, Braves, and Brewers are ahead of us. Brewers are ahead of us three games. Braves are ahead of us five games. So it's going to be tough either way. We have a better chance, is what I'm saying, of getting the wild card than we do the division. It's not easy, obviously. But we definitely have a chance for the division. We just can't have our bullpen blow it. That's all I'm saying. Going into some baseball history. 1928, Ty Cobb steals home for a record 54 times. Jeez, 54 times stealing home. I wonder if that record's even broken now. 1958, birth of 12-time All-Star Wade Boggs. And he was a World Series winner. Going to fighting now. Not much happened over the past weekend. I know it was like Berlanga or something like that. And I know that fight was just a mess. Kind of was a robbery. But going into this Saturday, I'm excited for. On top rank, Joe Smith Jr. versus Arthur Betterbeev for the WBO Light Heavyweight Championship. Can't wait to see that. I'm rooting for Joe Smith Jr., hard working class dude. But I'll be real. I think Arthur Biev is not only going to win, but he's going to stop him. It's going to be a later fight. You know, going to be around 9, 10 rounds, maybe even to the 11th. Um, but I do have Biev, better Biev by stoppage. I'll have to see Joe Smith win. But I think better Biev and uh, Bivol are, you know, one and two. Bivol number one, better Biev number two, and then Joe Smith number three. Um, but there's a big gap in between Joe Smith and better Biev and Bivol. Um, I have better be off by stoppage. He's aggressive. He punches harder. Joe Smith is more technical. I feel like, you know, he's more tougher, but better be him though. I don't know. I can say they're both tough. I, I ain't gonna say they're more, more tougher. They're definitely humble guys. I'm definitely like both fighters. It's not like I'm. It's not like I hate Arthur. Better be him. Um, they're both good guys. Good humble boxers. I just I'm rooting for, of course, Joe Smith Jr. because of just where he's from. Obviously, he's American. Um, obviously, I'm rooting for the guy from America. And then Arthur Bader uh, I mean, I, I root for him, obviously, when he fights, other than Joe Smith Jr. Uh, yeah, I like Joe Smith, though, because looking at his back history, like his ha- his history, he's a working class man. He, I think he owns a tree service business. So they call him the common man. I mean, regular old dude. He's the, he's the light heavyweight champion. Small recap on the Haney versus Cambosis fight, even though I did make a video on that. Cambosis Kambe- got worked. I mean, Haney proved that he he obviously undisputed, so he is the number one lightweight. But uh, I think Haney is beatable. Cambosis maybe not that guy, but I think Loma could beat Haney. I think 
Tank could beat Haney. Um, I think Haney's a better boxer than Tank, but Tank has more power, and all that takes is just one punch. But if I was to pick one lightweight to bet my all my money on, it'd be Loma. I said Loma was the only person who could beat Haney right now. And I thought I knew this fight was gonna be close, but jeez, man, I, I I thought it would be close. I meant Haney. I mean, he was barely getting touched by Cambosis. His defense is on another level. It reminds me of Floyd. And I'm, I know that might be a reach, but I'm serious. I mean, his defense is insane. Haney pulls away with undisputed lightweight belts. News happening now the past week is Fury will only come out of retirement if the paycheck is big. I don't know if he's fighting, if he wants to fight Us- Usyk or Joshua. I don't think it matters for him. I think he obviously beats both. Two hard fights, obviously. But he's saying, he called today. I don't know if he was joking, but like $500 million. I, I don't, he doesn't deserve that. Love Fury, my favorite fighter of all time, does not deserve $500 million. Half a billion does not deserve that. No fighter does. Uh, Max Fury should get paid as $100 million for a fight against Usyk or Joshua. I know Joshua did sign a contract with, I don't know how to pronounce the name. I've been following boxing for two years, and I still don't know how to pronounce the name. Dazin, Dazan, I don't know. You guys know what I mean, though. He signed like a $100 million a year contract with them. Uh, even though Joshua is not the best heavyweight, he is entertaining. Um, he did bring in views. So he deserves it. He deserves it. Uh, but obviously, Fury versus, and Usyk, I'd love to see them fight Fury. I'm sorry, Joshua and Usyk, I'd love to see them fight Fury. But I think Fury beats both. It has to be now, though. If Fury waits a couple years while Joshua and Usyk are getting better, it's going to be a problem for Fury. I want to see Fury, even though he keeps saying he retires. And I'll blame it. What he's saying is he doesn't need the money, meaning like he's not broke. He doesn't need the money. He doesn't need to put his life on the line. He doesn't need to put his body on the line for the money. Like he used to when he was younger, but if the price is right, he'd go out. I mean, obviously, I would. I would. I don't know if I would say yeah to. Ah, uh, maybe thinking about it, go fighting a heavyweight for a hundred million dollars. I don't know if it's worth it for me, obviously. But for Fury, I mean, anything over a hundred million dollars for a fight, Richard? No, nah, I'm doing that. I mean, you're already set for life now, but that you're not only setting yourself up for life for the extra hundred million. You're setting up your kids. You're setting up your grandchildren. Big paycheck. Hope Fury takes it. History, 1984, Tommy Hearns knocks out Duran in two rounds. I mean, two rounds. Tommy Hearns a legend. I feel like he's just not, you know, recognized enough. Duran, though, obviously a legend, but he was later on down in his career. NHL, Stanley Cup tonight. Tampa Bay Lightning versus Colorado Avalanche. Expect a reaction video tomorrow morning. Expect reaction videos all throughout the whole series. Um, check out my other reactions to the games. I was reacting to Oilers and Avalanche and then Oilers and Flames. For this game, I'm going to root for the Avalanche. Not because I've been reacting to the Avalanche more, but the Tampa Bay Lightning are in it like almost every year, it feels like. I'm going for the Avalanche. Uh, you know, Hopefully see them pull it off. History, 2011. We saw the Bruins win the Stanley Cup. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up the Big Dunks Podcast. Episode 26. If you don't know, of course, every single show um, is always quick. I always usually recap of what I, what I go over in the past couple or what I missed in the past couple of days, or what happened in the past couple of days or weeks. Making some changes to my YouTube now. Uh, I haven't been really reacting to any like soccer or rugby or any basically any sports outside of America um, because basically I covered every single thing I thought of. I reacted to all the popular soccer players, popular rugby players, reacted to cricket, reacted to F1. It's just not much anymore. Uh, so I'm probably gonna do. It's gonna be rare when I start doing uh, those types of videos. I'm gonna focus more around. American sports, NFL, NBA, MLB, obviously because I enjoy them more. They're my more favorite. I'm going to focus more on boxing, uh, hopefully some NHL, and yeah. So basically shifting my account from Iraq to like non-American sports to back into American sports. But of course, every once in a while, I'll still react to some foreign sports. Hope you guys enjoyed episode 26. You could listen to this on Spotify. You can listen to every podcast on Spotify or my YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube, Big Dunch. Make sure to like the Big Dunch Podcast on Spotify. And if you haven't already, I post sports history every single day on TikTok, along with some other stuff like my opinions on athletes and stuff like that. So make sure to check that out. I'm out, guys. Peace.